Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome again to this uh, spring semester, the last semester for all of you. Uh, just so glad that all of you could uh, you know, enroll yourselves for this semester, the spring. That will be a good learning experience for all of you. Uh, before we continue with uh, looking at the biblical basis and mandate for children's ministry, can uh, one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Any one of you can lead us in prayer? I don't want to pray. Yeah. Uh, Heavenly Father, we are very grateful for this morning. We thank you for the many gracious things you continue to supply to us. We pray that, Lord, as we begin this lesson, God be with us. Let your presence be with us. Let your, the Holy Spirit come and guide us in all our lessons. We pray for understanding. We pray for wisdom. And we pray for knowledge that you commit Pastor Selena into your hands. Continue to supply him with grace to be able to teach for our, under to our, our understanding in Jesus' mighty name. We pray that you grant us good internet connectivity and we pray for all our class members who are not yet joined. We pray that grant them the grace to be able to join us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I posted the uh, course content or the course material for uh, the biblical basis and mandate for children's ministry. So it will be available for you. You can access it from the stream page. Um, last week, we began looking at uh, why children's ministry is important. And uh, we also uh, began looking at the biblical basis and mandate for children's ministry. Um, we saw that, you know, God has a plan for, um, uh, for children and his uh, plan includes, uh, you know, uh, uh, for family, so the, the concept of family was uh, in God's mind from the very beginning. Uh, we also see how God blessed uh, Adam and Eve and said, be fruitful and multiply. Uh, we saw so, uh, some references in Genesis chapter 17, uh, where we see God chose and established Abraham's family as a family of promise and um, how he gives him the, you know, um, he makes a covenant and the sign of the covenant is circumcision and uh, it, it just does not involve uh, the adults or the older people, but uh, uh, even, uh, you know, uh, children who are uh, eight days old must be circumcised. So they, you know, from a very young age, they are part of that uh, covenant that God has made with Abraham and they're part of that covenantal community. So we see the importance God gave uh, for children uh, in the covenant, uh, in the promises that he made uh, to Abraham, which is an uh, everlasting covenant, uh, an everlasting promise that he made uh, with Abraham that is going to follow down uh, through the generations. Uh, we also see um, uh, in the Bible, you know, that uh, children need to be trained in the word of God. We looked at uh, Genesis chapter 18. Um, let me put on that slide. Yeah. We looked at Genesis chapter 18, uh, Exodus chapter 12, uh, where God is giving instructions to Moses about the Passover to Moses and Aaron. Uh, and they call the elders of the community and give them the instructions. And uh, uh, the basic reason why God is telling them that you need to observe this, uh, you know, every year is so that when your children, uh, uh, you know, participate um, in this whole celebration or this whole uh, event, they will ask you, you know, why are we doing this? And then you can uh, share with them or tell them what God has done, how he delivered them from Egypt. So they would know uh, who God is, what he has done, the nature of God, the attributes of God, the character of God and his love for his people and also the covenant that he's made with uh, them. 
And we uh, ended uh, the class last uh, uh, Monday by looking at Deuteronomy chapter 31, um, where we see that Moses is 120 years old. He's no longer able to uh, lead the people. So God chose Joshua as uh, the, the leader to succeed uh, Moses after him. And, um, and so, you know, Moses is giving instructions to the people what they need to do. And he's telling them that, you know, when the, when, when the God of Israel appears uh, uh, to them or when they appear before the Lord, their God, in the place that God chooses for them, uh, then, you know, they need to uh, read. Uh, and when they read the, the law uh, or the, 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 the law, the commandments that God has given to them, uh, he says, assemble the people, men, women, and children. So, you know, children are not left out. Uh, it's not just the older men and women, but it's also children um, and the aliens living in their town so that they can listen and learn the fear of the Lord their God and, um, you know, follow carefully in all uh, the words of the Lord that he's given to them. And he's um, in Deuteronomy chapter 31, uh, verse 13, which we read, he says, said, children who do not know this law uh, must hear it and learn to fear the Lord their God as long as they live in the land. Um, that they are going to possess uh, even as they cross over uh, the Jordan to possess the land of uh, Canaan. Then uh, we look at um, uh, Psalms chapter 78 verses 1 to 8. So can one of you please read uh, Psalms chapter 78 verses 1 to 8 please? Anyone would like to read Psalm 78, verses 1 to 8? Yes, I read. Thank you, Christopher. Yeah. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generations to come might know them, the children who would be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children, that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and may not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set its heart aright and whose spirit was not faithful to God. Thank you. Uh, so here in these verses, we see, you know, uh, uh, the instruction that uh, God is giving us that, uh, you know, we shouldn't hide uh, the truth or, you know, hide from uh, the children, uh, but reveal to them, tell them, you know, uh, the praiseworthy deeds of uh, what God has done, his power, his wonders that he has done. Um, and why is uh, God giving uh, the people of uh, Israel these instructions? It's so that he's saying that, you know, the next generation or the children who come up uh, would know him. Uh, would know his covenant, would know his commandments. And uh, he says that uh, even as we teach the children, uh, these children, when they grow up, they will teach in turn, they will teach uh, their children. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, the promises of God, the, the deeds of God, his power, his wonders, uh, his covenant, uh, uh, his commandments, his laws that he has given to them uh, will be passed on from generation uh, uh, to generation. And why is God saying that this needs to be passed on uh, from generation to generation? He says so that, you know, uh, the, that uh, the generations would put their trust in God. They would not forget his deeds, uh, but they would keep his commands. And um, the, the main reason here is, you know, he says so that they will not be like their forefathers, 
a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts are not loyal to God and whose spirits are not faithful uh, to him. So, you know, teaching uh, children uh, the laws, the commandments, uh, the promises of God, his word, uh, you know, uh, his power, his wonders, his, uh, his great deeds is uh, basically so that they don't grow up uh, to be uh, a stubborn and rebellious uh, adults or a stubborn and rebellious generation who rebel against God, who go away from his uh, words and or, or his, uh, his statutes, his commands, uh, and, you know, whose hearts are will always be loyal to the Lord their God and whose spirits, um, you know, they, they, even in their spirit man, they would be faithful uh, to him. So we see that, you know, uh, God knew the importance or stressed the importance, or established the importance uh, uh, that we need to give to train or teach or impart uh, uh, to young children uh, so that they could grow up uh, not to be a stubborn and rebellious generation, but a generation who loved their Lord, their God, who devoted their heart, uh, their their soul, their spirit man uh, is devoted to the Lord, their God. Um, uh, they're loyal to him, they're faithful to him, uh, and they do not depart from his uh, ways. We also see that uh, children, uh, you know, are integral part of the covenantal community. Um, the people of Israel were in covenant with uh, with God, uh, the Lord their God, and we see that it's not only the adults. We already saw that um, when God makes a covenant with um, uh, with Abraham, uh, we saw that in Genesis chapter seventeen, verses nine to fourteen. Uh, we also see that you know we read in uh, in other places in Scripture in uh, Jeremiah chapter thirty two, verses uh, thirty eight to forty one, and Deuteronomy chapter six verses 6 to 7 and uh, Proverbs 22 verse 6 that, you know, children are part of the covenantal co uh, community. That means they are in covenant with God uh, from a very uh, early days of their life, as early as eight days old, because the, the sign of the covenant, the circumcision ritual, uh, uh, you know, was uh, done to children who are eight days old. Um, so they are also integral part of the covenantal uh, community. So can uh, one of you please read uh, Jeremiah chapter 32, verses 38 to 41. Someone else can read uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, verses um, Six to seven. That's Deuteronomy chapter six, verses six to seven. Okay, and Proverbs chapter twenty-two, verse six. Yes, go ahead, uh, Asha. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. I'll give them one heart and one way, that they may fear me forever for their own good, and the good of their children after them. I'll make them with. I will make with them an everlasting covenant that I will not return away from the good to them. And I will put the fear of me in their hearts and that they may not turn from me. I will rejoice in doing them good. I will plant them in the land in faithfulness with all my heart and all my soul. Thank you. So here we see that, uh, you know, God is establishing his everlasting covenant and he's saying that he shall be their God. They shall be his people. Uh, you know, and he'll give them one heart uh, so that they can fear him always uh, for their own good and for the good of their children after them. So the covenant he's making uh, is here. It, it It's not, uh, you know, qualifying that it's just, uh, you know, uh, uh, adults, but it says I shall be, uh, they shall be my people and I shall be their God. So it's inclusive uh, of, uh, 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 of people from every uh, age group. And God is saying that, you know, he would establish this everlasting uh, covenant for their good and for the good of their children um, after them. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 to 7. Can one of you please read that? Shall I read, ma'am? Sure. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Go ahead, Rupa. Okay. Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 7. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house 
and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise thank you thank you amen so here we see uh, you know uh, i like the word uh, 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 it says impress them on your children you know uh, these commandments that he uh, god is giving he says you know write them upon your hearts and he says you know impress them upon your children or uh, like rupa read the version you know, diligently uh, sincerely uh, uh, you know uh, minute by minute day by day uh, so here we see you know uh, at every possible uh, time of the day teach your children impart to them uh, uh, about uh, the lord their god it says when you when you're sitting at home you know just uh, you know uh, doing things at home uh, chatting or whatever you know when you're sitting when you're walking along the road uh, with your children uh, when you're lying down when you get up so it's basically it's talking uh, it's mentioning uh, you know a, 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 not just a specific time where we have uh, you know family time or prayer time but it's Things throughout the day, you know, at any uh, uh, possible occasion throughout the day, you know, impart to your uh, uh, children, uh, impress them. You know, uh, you know what it means to impress, right? When you impress uh, uh, something on a, a, a piece of stone or wood or on the wall, it kind of becomes a permanent uh, a mark, something that you can't, uh, uh, can, cannot be removed, something that cannot be uh, wiped out. So he says, impress them and do this uh, very diligently. And that's why we see that, you know, um, the Jews had to, um, uh, uh, you know, write the, the Torah, the law on their forehead. They had to bind it around their head or uh, they had tassels, uh, uh, you know, and they, they had even these small things in their pockets where uh, the word of God and just a reminder of, uh, you know, uh, 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 it's, it's equivalent to what we uh, talk about today as uh, meditating on God's word, you know, uh, just chewing what we uh, are uh, bringing back and uh, reiterating in our minds, in our lives, you know, uh, what we read in scripture during our quiet time uh, that day or uh, what God has been, what God is speaking to us, uh, just meditating on uh, a scripture. So he says, you know, throughout the day, just talk about it uh, to your children so that it's not forgotten, uh, uh, you know, it's not something that is uh is wiped away from their memory, but it's just become so part and parcel uh, of their life. So God's law, His commandments, is just so part of their core of their uh, their being, their structure, their very fiber of their entire being. That uh, you know uh, that they automatically are just living uh, in, in the commandments, in the laws uh, of the Lord. Their uh, God, Proverbs chapter twenty-two, verse six. Can one of you read that, please? Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 22. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Train up a child in the way he should go, and we and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. So uh, you know, it says start off uh, on the way and uh, start children off on the way they should go. Uh, that even when they're old, you know, they will not turn from uh, the laws, the commandments. So uh, we already saw the statistics I mentioned, uh, you know, um, uh, last Monday at the age of nine and the age of 13, you know, children's uh, basic uh, value structure, their foundation of their values, what is right and wrong about who God is, his nature, uh, his attributes, uh, their relationship with God is all kind of consolidated or has a strong foundation by the time they uh, come to an age of 13. So, you know, here again, uh, God is stressing the importance of how to, uh, you know, impart to children, uh, teach them uh, at the very young age so that when they're old, uh, they will not turn away from it so that it just becomes uh, so much part of their life, their very being, uh, their lifestyle that when they grow up, they will just automatically, you know, uh, walk in the ways of the uh, Lord. So we see that God's plan for uh, children is um, 
you know, uh, that God has a plan for children. His plan includes family. His plan includes uh, that they be trained in the word of God. His plan also uh, included that they be an integral part of the covenant community or the covenant that he, uh, he made with Abraham uh, and with his uh, generations. Also, we see in scripture that, you know, uh, children are uh, part of the corporate uh, worship uh, in the Israelite uh, community. So I'll just put up that slide. Okay, they're part of the corporate worship. Uh, so the biblical pattern we see is for family, uh, old, uh, young people, youth, uh, teens, adults, older people, uh, and even children to come together in worship, uh, praise, prayer, uh, repentance, to hear the reading of scripture, and even uh, fasting and prayer. So we look at some of these scriptures uh, that uh, reveal to us how children are part of that corporate uh, uh, worship in the Israelite uh, uh, community. So praise, uh, uh, can some of one of you please read uh, Psalm chapter 148, verse 12 to 13, please? Children are part of the praise and worship time in uh, 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 part of the uh, praise worship time that happens uh, in the community of the people of Israel. Psalm 148 mm -hmm. verses 12 to 13. Bring men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. Thank you, Rupa. So here we see that, you know, uh, you know, when God calls people, his people to praise him and worship him, it's not just for young men and women and older men and women, but also children are included in that uh, prayer. Uh, can one of you please read? Sorry. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20 verses uh, 12 to 13, please. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 12 to 13. Shall I, ma'am? Yes, thank you, Rupa. O oh, our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Meanwhile, all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Thank you. So here we see in Second Chronicles chapter twenty, you know, King Jehoshaphat, um, uh, his uh, he just walks in the ways of the Lord compared to his uh, fathers before him who worshipped idols. But when he becomes king, you know, uh, he uh, reinstitutes uh, the worship, the reading of the law, uh, gets the temple cleaned up, and uh, uh, you know, God blesses him with peace and prosperity so uh, Judah is just prospering and flourishing but uh, you know suddenly we see three kings coming to fight against uh, uh, King Jehoshaphat and uh, instead of King Jehoshaphat you know trying to uh, get all his generals and soldiers and plan a strategy on how they can face this vast uh, army of three uh, kings and their armies, you know, he uh, actually does something that is very unusual. He, you know, he, if you know the that in the narrative, uh, we read that, you know, he, he uh, asks all the people to fast and pray. Uh, and here we, and then he calls them all to the temple and, um, you know, um, and all of them are there, uh, men, women, children, and even little ones. And all of them are fasting and praying. And he says, even your animals should fast and pray. So everyone in the Israelite community. So here is a, a situation where they're going for war and, uh, you know, they need strength. But he's saying, you know, hey, come on, let's fast and pray. And it's not just men and women. Uh, uh, so let your children just be at home let them be playing. But it's everyone, including children and little ones, bring them uh, to the temple. So everyone had gathered to the temple. So I think it was just such a beautiful, must have been such a beautiful learning experience for uh, these little ones and children. Um, 
just to know you know uh, what to do in times of crisis in times of struggles uh, and just to see the power of god just being demonstrated you know uh, uh, joseph comes and uh, you know he does not uh, complain or grumble or murmur against god he doesn't say god you know compared to all my forefathers who worshiped idols i did this 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 uh, i honored you and then why is all of you know why is this happening to me you know why is these three kings coming uh, uh, to fight against us uh, but he actually you know praises god he if you read uh, uh, second chronicles chapter 20 uh, beautiful passage he just praises god uh, you know and uh, we're just reading the the end of his uh, his praise and worship and prayer to god uh, and he says he just is reminding god of who he is a covenant that he's made with his people and then he says you know we have no power to face this vast army uh, we do not know what to do but our eyes are on um, you and then god you know uh, his spirit comes upon uh, uh, jeziel and then he tells uh, and he uh, tells uh, the people and king joseph at what uh, what is the strategy for war and i'm sure when they're doing all of this you know children and the little ones are hearing and they are just learning you know how god speaks to them that he's a god who's living a god who speaks a god who sees a god who's mindful a god who works on their behalf and uh, you know, before they even march out for war, uh, these three kings, uh, you know, uh, sorry, they march out for war, but even before they reach the place, they see that, you know, all these three kings and their armies have fought against each other and uh, everyone is killed and they just bring back plunder. Uh, and it takes three days for them to bring back uh, the plunder. So all of this is something that, you know, the children are uh, uh, watching and uh, learning. And it's something that, you know, uh, they will grow into knowing uh, who God is. So sometimes we feel that, you know, children should be left out of, uh, okay, bring them in for praise and worship. Uh, uh, but sometimes for prayer, fasting, we think uh, we shouldn't include children. But it's it's good at a very young age uh, to have children, uh, you know, pray and fast. Sometimes we think, hey, children can't fast; uh, they're too small to fast. But we have, uh, you know, I've seen children from uh, other faiths uh, as young as in grade four and grade five. Uh, you know, fasting and going without water uh, the entire day, so zealous for their uh, for their God. So uh, why not our Christian children? You know, why not we impart to them and teach them uh, this at a very young age? Uh, you know, um, the power of uh, just praying and interceding and uh, coming before God, and um, uh, so that when they uh, when they as they're growing up, you know, they're not just running to people or running to Google or running here and there to uh, search for answers, but they know where to come. Uh, they know where they get their answers from, and they would also learn uh, the power of of uh, fasting uh, the next one is repentance um, so um, uh, children are also part of uh, the repentance or when uh, the people of Israel repented of their sins, children are also part of this. Uh, we read this in Ezra chapter 10 verse 1. Can one of you please read that please? Ezra 10, chapter 1, uh, Ezra 10, this one. Now, while Ezra was praying, and while he was confessing, weeping and bowing down for the house of, the, of God, a very large assembly of men, women, and children gathered to him from Israel, for people were very bitterly. Thank you, Maggie. So here we see that... Uh... Ezra is basically, uh, you know, weeping and mourning and confessing the sins of uh, the people uh, before the house of God. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the people of Israel, men, women and children gather around him and they also, you know, weep uh, bitterly. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, for the people wept very bitterly. Uh, so this shows that, you know, the people were also struck uh, by the conviction of uh, their sin and the need to confess and repent. And uh, they they sorrowed, you know, or they mourned or grieved over the sin of uh, the, of the community, of the 
covenant community they were part of, uh, just as Ezra had done. So we see that even children were part of this repentance, and uh, they are learning you know, um, what sin is, uh, how sin grieves the heart of God, how sin uh, breaks uh, our relationship with God, the covenant that we uh, have with God, and how important it is for uh, repentance. Um, so, you know, uh, children were also part of, uh, uh, you know, the corporate worship, praise, prayer, uh, repentance. They are also part of the reading uh, and the hearing of uh, a scripture, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 2. Can one of you please read that, please? Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 2. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men and women and all who could hear with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Abini. So here, uh, Nehemiah has finished building the walls of Jerusalem and, you know, uh, 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 Ezra the priest brings out the law um, and he reads it before the people. And here we see that, of course, children are not mentioned, but it mentions men, women, and all who are able to uh, understand. So if we look at uh, the scripture passages that we have read so far, children were part of, uh, you know, uh, 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 part of everything that was done in uh, the community of Israel. Um, so here we see that if they were able to understand, I'm sure their parents would have brought them to listen uh, to the reading of the scripture or uh, the law. So, so important for us to uh, get children to uh, uh, read and to listen uh, to the word of God from a very young age so that, you know, they would just uh, learn and they would love God's word. We also see that uh, salvation, you know, is... Uh, it's not something that is uh, has a specific age limit. There's no age limit uh, set uh, in scripture for the gift of salvation or uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, let's look at Acts chapter, one scripture passage uh, in Acts chapter 2, verses 38 to 39. Can one of you please read that, please? Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and 39. Ma'am, ma'am, Acts chapter 2. 2 30 to 39 and peter said to them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the holy spirit but this promise is for you and for your children and for all those who are far off everyone whom the lord our god calls to himself thank you Amen. So here we see, uh, you know, just so excited to uh, read, uh, uh, you know, this verse, uh, just saying that, you know, uh, repentance, baptism, forgiveness of sins, salvation, which we, we're talking about, just one word that, you know, fits in all of this. Uh, and also uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit is, is also for uh, children. So there is no, you know, senior Holy Spirit or junior Holy Spirit or the child Holy Spirit, but the uh, Holy uh, uh, Holy Spirit works equally uh, amongst all age groups, uh, whether it's a small child, whether it's an uh, it's a mature, grown up, old uh, adult, you know, um, can receive salvation. So sometimes we think, uh, you know, uh, we should. Uh, you know, not talk about sin, uh, salvation, uh, the consequences of sin or hell uh, to children because they might get frightened. Uh, but, you know, it's important uh, for them to know at a very young age uh, and understand this uh, so that they're able to know what Jesus has done or even talk about how Jesus was crucified on the cross because we can think it's so gruesome, it's so, uh, uh, it's so uh, difficult for the little minds, uh, innocent minds to understand all of this. But, uh, you know, at a very young age, if we are just able to communicate, have them to understand, you know, they'll come to a place where um, uh, they would... Uh, sense that need uh you know for to ask uh, uh jesus for the forgiveness of their sins also for the baptism of the holy spirit sometimes we think you know what can a small child understand about uh, receiving this gift or the baptism of the holy spirit or flowing in the gifts or speaking in tongues uh but uh, we see that even 
uh, small children, young children, you know, uh, uh, can flow in the gifts of the Spirit, can speak in tongues, can minister healing and deliverance uh, uh, to people. So because scripture says, you know, this promise is for you and for your uh, children. So let's not put any limitations uh, in uh, in our understanding uh, of what children can take or not take, but it, let's go with what Scripture says because uh, you know they are uh, they can come they are in an age where they can understand these things and flow and the Holy Spirit uh, you know we can just minister to them teach them but it's the Holy Spirit would work in them and lead them and guide them to uh, uh, you know uh, to greater things that He has the plan and the purposes that He has for. Uh, them. Before we move on, uh, uh, anyone has any questions so far? What we covered? Any questions? Okay, so we just saw how children are um, a part an integral part of the covenantal community, a part of the praise and worship, prayer, repentance, a public reading of uh, scripture uh, and salvation. So, you know, uh, as a church today, which is, uh, you know, uh, in covenant with God, uh, the bride of uh, uh, Christ, uh, you know, uh, uh, we need to also keep in mind that we need to include children in the various aspects of church life. Uh, we should train them, uh, teach them how to meaningfully uh, participate in uh, various aspects of uh, uh, church life. Yes, Mangi, you had a you had your hand up. Yes, but um, I want to ask. Um, we, in all scriptures we read, uh, we see that children were included into, were part of of of, of the meeting. So why do we separate them now? Why, why do we have a separate kids ministry? While we see in the Bible, they were part of the main congregation. Uh, sorry, Mangi, can you please repeat that because I could not hear your question clearly. Sorry. Okay. Um. I, I was asking, we see in all scriptures that we've read so far, we see that children were part of the uh, the meeting, were part of the congregation, and they were not segregated from from the, the main body of the church. So why do we separate them and have a separate service or entity called kids, kids ministry? Why don't we just allow them to join us so that we can all worship together or Hear the word together, or if it's prophecy, he prophesies uh, at the same time together. Why do we have to have kids in ministry? Thank you. Thank you, Mangi. So uh, I think my internet uh, connectivity is uh, very unstable. So uh, just repeating your question, you're saying that uh, from the scripture passage that we read, uh, we saw that uh, children were also part of the gathering along with uh, other men and women, the older folks of the Israelite community. Uh, so why in today's church we are having a separate uh, time of uh, worship or uh, a gathering for children and separate for adults? Yes, that's your question, right? Yes, but that's my question. Okay, uh, good question. Um, actually, you know, it's uh, uh, as as the generations have come and evolve and we've evolved into things. Uh, basically, uh, you know, um, uh, learning about child psychology, their understanding, their uh, ways of uh, growing and how to cater to their needs. Uh, it's it is it's the best thing that we do to have a separate. Uh, you know, time where we are teaching them the foundations because those who are in in adult worship service, they've already passed that foundation stage. They come to a stage where, uh, you know, uh, we can give them a solid food. Of course, everyone is not in the same level. Some of them require milk, but children uh, are in that foundation years of their life where uh, we need to, uh, you know, teach them in a way that they best understand. We will look at uh, uh, the developmental needs of children in different age groups. So even when uh, uh, we have um, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, children's church or we have Sunday school, uh, we don't teach children all together uh, from all age groups at one time. Uh, you know, uh, we have children in different classes meeting at, uh, 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 in different classrooms uh, and we engage to them in their level of understanding, their mindset, their mental faculties, their uh, social learning skills, their, uh, uh, their, their, their ability to grasp. Uh, so what, how we teach a child in grade one or grade two can be very different than how we teach a child in grade eight, nine and ten. Uh, the challenges a child in grade one and two will be very different from the challenges a child uh, or a teen uh, in eight, grade eight, nine and ten will um, uh, will are going through so it's good to you know basically teach them uh, in their level where they're able to understand and uh, uh, the challenges and difficulties they face so that the word of god comes alive to them in their own circumstances in their own uh, uh, situations of course when they are in grade 10 they pass out they they think that they you know they don't want to be any longer in um, children's church but uh, we are noticing uh, these days that once children transition from grade 10 to uh, the adult church, they are not able to fit in because, uh, you know, it's too, uh, they're way too uh, high for them to understand or to be part of the adult church. And they, they feel they're way too small to come to children's church. Uh, so they are in between. And, you know, this transition stage is a very difficult stage for all of them because they're teenagers, they're going through various um, uh, uh, changes. Uh, physically, emotionally, uh, spiritually, uh, mentally. Uh, and so, you know, they're not, they don't fit in. So we kind of started a teen church where children are really enjoying it. Uh, so we need to, uh, it's important that we cater to children in their own uh, age groups that based on their needs. Uh, just like in school, you know, uh, we just don't uh, send children directly to uh, you know to college but they go from grade from kindergarten to grade one two three four five because they're learning basically and they're building up and they come to a stage where they can go to college and then you know uh, 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 walk alongside with other adults uh, in their kind of relationship or understanding uh, of the things of the world and uh, uh, and the mindset and able to relate to them so uh, Sometimes yes, we can have children in the uh, 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 in the gathering in church when it comes to basically um, just say praise and worship, or sometimes even uh, prayer or extended times of prayer or extended times of praise and worship and fasting and prayer. We could include children, um, but also if you have it separately, you know, it becomes more meaningful for them to. Uh, also pray and engage and uh, break down their prayer points and make it more easier for them so that they're able to enjoy what they're doing. Uh, but I'm sure, you know, when it came to the Israelite community, um, uh, you know, they were not so well advanced in all of these things. Uh, they didn't even have the law in their hands uh, for uh, for them to read, the parents to read and access it. So it was just the priest. So everyone had to just go together and listen to the priest. Um, but then, of course, you know, uh, the parents would impart to them, uh, like we read, impress it upon their hearts throughout the day. So uh, uh, parents have the responsibility of teaching their children throughout the week. It's just one or two hours when, you know, they engage in church uh, where they are taught and they're learning. Does that help, uh, uh, Mandy? Okay, thank you. Yes, yes Kishan. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Kishan. Hello. Yes, Kishan. Ma'am, can we say to our children to do personal devotion? Yes, why not? Can, can we say to our children do personal devotion? Yes, we can. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, children devotional books that are available today uh, for different age groups. Uh, uh, you know, uh, so parents buy that. I've seen that in 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 uh, Christian bookstores uh, for various ages. Uh, you know, they have these devotional books, and uh, 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 children are able to read. And uh, of course, when they come to an age where they're able to read, maybe four, uh, grade four, five, six onwards, uh, they're able to read. So they can have their devotions, and it's also the parents who sit along with them. Uh, help them out, uh, understand, and read God's word. And I think it's a good practice uh, to get children. <clears throat> Sorry, 
it's a good practice to get children uh, uh, you know cultivated in this in this whole uh, area of uh, spending personal time with god but uh, if for children who are not able to read grade one, two, and three, their parents basically just uh, sit with them, you know, uh, sh share a story or narrative from the word of God, and then, you know, get them to pray. And sometimes, you know, get them to pray for their friends or their family members who are not well. So uh, just teaching them. So I've seen many parents who do this. Of course, nowadays parents uh, don't have the time. So this is kind of not uh, a regular routine but it's good to uh, practice it so that children uh, learn at a very young age does that help yes ma'am yes, ma thank you kishan can, can children ask for gift of the holy spirit yes and also because, in tongues yes because uh, here we see uh, acts chapter 2 verse 38 and 39 it says for your children and uh, you know, uh, we had, uh, uh, we we do have the baptism of the Holy Spirit in adult church uh, at APC. Uh, once I was leading it and there was, uh, I think there was just one adult and we had um, one teen and we had uh, uh, three children from children's church uh, who had come for uh, a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And um, uh, just the desire in their hearts to, uh, for the baptism of the holy spirit they came we of course have baptism of the holy spirit uh, at children's church we have it once a year uh, where we teach them about uh, the baptism of the holy spirit and then we get them in their own um, you know class uh, classes uh, to pray uh, how to start praying in tongues uh, how to just wait upon the holy spirit um, so many of them uh, as young as in grade three and four have started speaking uh, in tongues and their parents have told me that uh, they do speak in tongues yes so uh, just a desire for them you know i want to be baptized is not just for adults and they came for the baptism of the holy spirit in adult church uh, we had three children and i think one child uh, was uh, must have been in uh, fifth grade she was very small fourth and fifth grade um you know it's just amazing of course uh, she didn't speak in tongues uh, but you know she just told me that she had a small vision and uh, uh, she saw you know she's just dancing and worshiping god she loves to do dance choreography uh, dancing and praising god so i said maybe you know when you're doing that you know the holy spirit will just uh, minister to you and you can start speaking in tongues so just believe that and you know keep pursuing uh and you will uh you know speak in tongues so yes that was so beautiful actually and uh, children in grade three four yes they do speak in tongues so we can teach them about uh the holy spirit we, uh, uh, the curriculum that we have at apc we have um, uh, all of our uh, all of the bible college courses uh which you all are learning you know we teach the same thing for our uh, children in our children's church uh, so we have uh, the courses written out for grade uh, level one is grade two to four level two is grade five to seven level three is grade eight to ten uh, of course we teach them about the covenants we teach them about the holy spirit we teach all that you are learning uh, they too learn uh, but you know um, uh, catering to their uh, age specific uh, understanding and we build on it uh, through the levels okay elisha says in my church although we separate children from service we have an in integrational service of it yes that's uh, that's good i've seen that in 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 churches where they have children uh uh come in for worship and after worship um they have somebody come and just tell them a small small narrative or small story and a small learning uh that is part of the adult church and then the children are taken uh to uh, their own uh, children's church uh but some some churches don't have that yes so yeah, it's good to have children part of the uh, uh, you know uh, uh, part of the service uh, they also learn we had our children's uh, in our children's church once lead uh, the entire service at all people's church uh, they led the worship uh, they played the instruments they did the declaration they um, uh, 
uh, they also um, two of them uh, shared the word uh, and then we had uh, a choreography we had uh, during the worship we had two children paint and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, they were taught how to hear from the holy spirit and and after that reveal what the holy spirit uh, was leading them to paint and then uh, release the word and uh, for those that word uh, uh, you know uh, the word that they shared uh, it was applicable for whoever they could come and take that painting and then we had children who were trained in healing and deliverance they went through that whole uh, book on pastor's book on healing and deliverance that you all learn in 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 the first semester they went through that whole course for uh, almost a year we taught them and then we had those children stand up in front and uh, we had people come up in front and minister and it was just just such a powerful worship and how God was glorified to the lives of these uh, young children. So we can even have children uh, lead worship, not just, uh, I mean, do the entire service, preach, teach, uh, minister, uh, pray for people, uh, and not just do some songs and choreography and things like that. We can teach them the importance of also, you know, doing this. And I, the children did uh, an excellent job. I mean, uh, God was just immensely glorified in that service, yes. Okay, any other questions anyone else has? In some churches I've seen how uh, the children come up in front and release a prophetic, uh, you know, they release prophetic words, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, uh, they pray for healing. Uh, it's just so powerful. But we need to train children in all of this. We had something called the Kingdom Builders Club. Uh, where we train children and how to release the supernatural as uh, they when they do dance and choreography when they sing when they lead worship uh, when they uh, pray uh, ministering healing and deliverance and also you know those who are uh, interested in art painting and how to release uh, the prophetic through that so uh, all those who have um, had gifts in those different areas we had these kingdom builders club uh, we we just didn't teach them the skill but also how to release the supernatural and when they led the service you know uh, it was just so powerful how god uh, worked uh, through them yes okay we'll uh, stop here uh, we'll continue on wednesday uh, uh, thank you all for joining class anyone has any other questions before we end class today no okay Thank you everyone for uh, joining class and I will see you after the break uh, for uh, first Timothy. Thank you.